What's up, everybody? You are checking out the latest episode of the Xbox Corner with Doodle and C Money. I am C Money, and I am joined by the always lovely Doodle. What's up, everybody? Thank you so much for rocking out with us today. Absolutely, absolutely. Listen, we've been very, very busy lately with packs and all the content to put up. We had such a great week. But we have to get back down to business here. And, of course, our homie Phil Spencer doesn't disappoint. He comes through with these dope-ass interviews where he's going ahead and dropping bombs. <laughs> dropping bombs. Now, I've been hearing some of the discourse that's been going on in these Twitter streets. And I got to tell you, I'm super confused. Super-duper confused by what I'm hearing from these people. So let's dive into the interview. And then we'll talk about it and we'll see if you guys are on the same page as we are, because what I've been reading is amazing. So the headline says it all this. First of all, there's an interview with Polygon. Uh, Phil Spencer wants Epic Game Stores and others, which you know what that means, Steam, on Xbox consoles. Nice. To grow the console market, Xbox will need to be more like PC. This is Makes so sense. exciting. It's Checks so exciting. out. Amazing. So they had an interview with him uh, during the Game Developers Conference, um, and this is what he had to say. Uh, they, I, you know, I really these interviews they're, they're a little weird for me. I don't like when they when they summarize interviews. Yes, it's, right. Like I want to, I want to hear. I want to know what happened. I don't yes. want a summary. I don't want anyone's take exactly. on an interview. Exactly. I want to hear the words coming out of Phil's mouth exactly as he meant them with the tone in which it was delivered. There is a com complete, a complete difference between going ahead and uh, reading something someone said and hearing something someone said. And there's also a difference between something someone's saying and something that someone else is saying that someone else said. Facts. Facts. Yeah. So basically they could add shit that their feeling is being <laughs> I, I said. You, Z. And, <laughs> and and we don't actually know the exact word for word situation outside of where he's quoted. We don't know the exact question they asked him. Uh I, I don't like that format too much, but regardless, we have the information here. So let's just dive through it. Uh so Spencer told Polygon about the ways he'd like to break down the walled gardens that have historically limited players to making purchases through the first party stores tied to each console. And again, in layperson terms, this is them just saying their own thing. Why you should be able to buy games from other stores on Xbox, not just the official storefront, right? Spencer mentioned his frustrations with closed ecosystems. So we asked for clarity. Could he really see a future where stores like Itch.io or Itch.io and Epic Game Store existed on Xbox? Was it just a matter of figuring out mountains of paperwork to get there? Quote, yes, said Spencer. Quote, consider our history as the Windows company. Nobody would blink twice if I said, hey, when you're using a PC, you get to decide the type of experience you have by picking where to buy games. There's real value in that. All right, and then they say Spencer believes console players will benefit from the freedom too, and so will console makers, console makers like Microsoft. Um, Spencer explained how in the past console makers would typically subsidize the cost of expensive hardware, knowing that a portion of every dollar spent on games for the platform over the years would eventually make it back to the console maker. Then in time, the console maker would recoup the subsidy and hopefully more. All right, so this little bracket all kind of goes together here. So Babe, when you hear this, right, and he's saying when you're using a PC, you don't have um, to really decide uh, that or, or when you're using a PC, you have the freedom to decide what type of experience you want to have, whether you want to rock with the Xbox Game Store on PC, whether you want to rock on Steam, Epic Game Store, uh, GOG, whatever, whatever you want. Um, there's a freedom there. Absolutely. Right. So him talking about possibly bringing that over to the xbox is i mean i i can't see it any other way than mind-blowing and honestly 
a, a complete game changer um, to the way you look at a console. Absolutely. I mean, you get to dictate the type of experience that you want to have. To simplify it, it's like walking into a Macy's or a Best Buy. And rather than like now you will have the option of just walking into the mall and going ahead and pick and choose what you want to do or where you want to go. It is Facts. just for the consumer to be able to pick and choose as they wish. The fact that Phil is going ahead and making this, you know, facilitating this for us is it's I mean, I'm excited. Absolutely. And then obviously, I mean, when you look at this, you know, he's he's talking about this as a future thing that they would like to be doing. But they're really just setting us up right for the idea that come next gen, this is their this is their plan. I mean, absolutely. And I think he is, like you said, he's getting ahead of the situation. It's kind of like, here you go. Don't say I did not tell you. Here's the information. No need, no need to like kick and scream and flip out and rage out later on as it usually happens. And the thing is that people are out there doing exactly the same thing. Um, and we, we spoke about this just uh, right when we started in, you know, someone like Phil, whose words, even as he's speaking himself, get they, people find a way to twist the words and, and make of it something else that it's not. I feel like, you know, knowing his position this should have been something that was like a live interview or or recorded interview where he was there and saying it and telling it like it is agreed agreed and the beauty of this and this is what is so important about this this is him explaining how they're going to keep xbox relevant how they're going to make more people come to Xbox. Absolutely. And this is him saying we are in a position of power right now. We are in a position where we can make moves and choose, pick and choose how we want to move forward. Pick and choose how we want to grow. Add to the experience of being a part of the Xbox ecosystem. I mean, thank you, Phil. All right. Now. Moving on here, Spencer says Moore's law has slowed down. The price of the components of a console aren't coming down as fast as they have in previous generations. Worse, he explained, the console market isn't growing with more gamers moving to PC and handheld options. Now, the notion of subsidizing a console and forcing players to purchase games through the official storefront to help recoup costs might not make sense. The walls meant to lock people into consoles might be motivating them to stay out. He says subsidizing hardware becomes more challenging in today's world, Spencer said. And I will say, and this may seem too altruistic, I don't know that it's growing the industry. So I think, what are the barriers? What are the things that create friction in today's world for creators and players? And how can we be a part of opening up that model? I Listen. I got to tell you, when you listen to this, right, when, when you read this out and you hear this being said, I don't know how you jump to people talking about um, Xbox games going to PlayStation. I, I don't understand. It seems to be just a narrative that people want to hang on to, to go ahead and feel like they're saying something that is controversial and that matters, or like they cracked some type of code that is not there to crack. Exactly. And it's like, like you got like the people who are sitting there, these ponies who are just sitting there constantly harping on this they're doing it out of such fear of what's to come because phil is not playing checkers with these little ones phil's out here playing 4d chess absolutely he is making moves that they could not comprehend you have potential steam integration and epic game store integration and who knows sky's the limit he could put every game store on here because at the end of the day what he would then be looking at is not only having a console but creating an entry level or not even entry i would say depending on what the next console is it could be a 
you know, middle high to high end entry point for PC. Yes. At a fixed cost because they have that, you know, the fact that they're going to make millions of them, they can reduce the cost and allow people to now not only treat this as an Xbox, but as their PC as well and allow them to play their PC games. Can you imagine you turn on your next Xbox day one and you have all of your Steam library, you have all of your Epic Games Store games, not to mention they're talking about uh, Xbox games going to PlayStation. How about this one? All those PlayStation games that are coming to PC. Oh. Wh- what happens? All of a sudden, without <laughs> even batting an eye, all of those PlayStation games are available to download on your next gen this Xbox. Is, this is why you'll see money. You have cracked an actual code, right? This is the thing. And and the ponies go out there and they release this energy, as you mentioned, out of fear. And no one gives into that type of bullshit more than the Xbox community. They go ahead, they take the ponies' thoughts, they take their freaking hopes and ideas that they create and they make them real. And then they go out there and spread this type of nonsense. Yeah, it's it's wild. Again, you read this very clearly. He's talking about how to grow the Xbox brand, how to grow Xbox, how to make Xbox an integral part of everyone's everyone's living room, office, game room. They want an Xbox everywhere because guess what? I personally, well, we have a a phenomenal gaming PC, but we keep that in the game room. Yes. So when we're upstairs, you know, playing all together, we're playing on our Xboxes. We have multiple Xboxes throughout the house. Only a couple gaming PCs that are downstairs. I'm literally right now playing a game on my Steam Deck and I want to go ahead and play it on my Xbox. Guess what happens when Phil comes through with this? Absolutely. Come on, man. We're talking about someone who went ahead and purchased ABK to get into the mobile mobile business, right? To go Absolutely. ahead and get games in there. And so there's no reason to question when he's trying to go ahead and grow Xbox even more. Absolutely. A hundred percent agreed. I mean, he's making it pretty clear. His frustration is growing the industry. And that's not happening as much because people these days are more likely buying PCs and handhelds. And, you know, you find other avenues to go ahead and make Xbox more relevant. And where there is access to go ahead and bring, not just bring people into the ecosystem, but to also branch out and go ahead and have different avenues to bring in revenue. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, they go into a part of uh, is scrapping exclusivity on more and more Xbox games. Okay. Now, again, where's the quote? from phil spencer saying that right they quote him multiple times in here but they don't quote that here because they are inferring they're putting their own spin on his answers and again he made it very clear that the market is not growing he's not interested in sharing the same group of people over and over again he's looking to grow and move beyond that that's why when he's talking about this he uses pc as such a a guiding star because he wants to bring the pc market into the console market he's trying to take people who predominantly play on pcs and maybe not the hardest of hardcore, obviously, the people who tinker with their boxes and, and upgrade them and do all that stuff. Yes. Or for the more casual PC market who, you know, buys a gaming PC because they just want the better stuff. And I'm going to tell you right now, when there is the option, I mean, you could be the hardest of hardcore, but when there's an option available, you might go ahead and and dive in and, and, you know, tiptoe your way in or check some things out. It's all about option and making things available. 
Of course, especially what like, the same way we just talked about it, right? We have our big gaming PCs downstairs. But if you know, and that's not going to change, right? Even if they do this, we'll have whatever the beefiest PC version that I could create here, whether that I could purchase, we'll have a PC that can do that. But then yeah throughout the house we can have our xbox to play the xbox games to play the pc games to play all that stuff right on there and don't forget the playstation games oh yeah that's true <laughs> <laughs> yo it's funny because um they hear phil spencer talking about making the xbox more like pc they also hear hiroki totoki talking about putting their games everywhere and they can't and connect they, these dots they can't connect them no. especially they want to discount they want to discount the fact that Hiroki Totoki has talked about putting them everywhere else as well as PC. So they want to put them on consoles everywhere else. But they want to harp in on the fact that, no, 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 he's talking about PC. Well, guess what? Guess what? When they do put it on PC, <laughs> guess where you're going to be able to play it? Snatchies. On the new Xbox. We're living in a phenomenal time right now. You know, this is honestly, once this goes through, this is endgame. Absolutely. This is Endgame. It's been Endgame. This is, is these dominating are the final, completely. These are the final pieces, C-Money. Absolutely. Absolutely. And again, you see it right here, right? Um, they, they Again, they're kind of putting this into perspective here. Spencer's view sounds reasonable on paper. The console market is flat. And it links to this place where it tells you that there was pretty much no growth in the console market. But it says the PC market is growing in part because it gives players a choice in where to buy the games. So if consoles want to bring players back, they'll need to be more like PCs. And that means bringing down the walled gardens that for decades have protected the financial model if uh, of game consoles. If Spencer wants to make that vision a reality, then it's reasonable that we could one day boot up our Xbox to see X Epic Game Stores, Itch.io, and other shops a la Steam waiting to sell us games and hopefully competing with one another to bring players the best possible Possible deals. That's freaking amazing, dude. That, that is, is phenomenal. He's not saying, you know what? This already exists on PC. Let's just shut down the Xbox. No, he's saying, let's go ahead and let's figure out how we can go ahead and make the Xbox brand grow by seeing how PC has grown and how that market works in adapting. Again, adapting a word that doesn't seem to make sense over at PlayStation. They cannot adapt. And that's why they're sitting there taking a full year to go ahead and, and, and regroup and break out and, and just see what happens because they have not been able to adapt to all the changes that Phil has been brought to the industry. Absolutely. Phil, Phil's nest, like literally changing the game in front of our very eyes and we know listen microsoft has always had an eye towards the future and they've been right they've just gotten so much pushback in the past that they've backpedaled but they're not backpedaling now they're not they're not I gonna do the that. same mistake that they did last time when they knew that if they would have just stuck with their plan they would have been ahead of the curve with everything here and they wouldn't have had all those nasty narratives that would have just died down if they stayed the course right that being said you know i understand the ponies right the ponies are desperate right the ponies will will do anything they can to try to to try to break the idea of what xbox is and what it's going to be and, and the importance that it has the the shame that i feel is when i see these xbox dudes still out here like treating this as if phil is somehow damaging the brand is somehow hurting the brand dude f let's put this into perspective here playstation has no games they have no games now they have no games coming in any foreseeable future you guys are forgetting that phil spencer is the only the only person with a platform that is pushing the high-end games that we want to play absolutely he is understandably making decisions based off of the fact that these games are expensive and he needs to figure out how to keep the ability to make these expensive games while also broadening out how they make money and i could tell you right now you put steam you put epic game store 
You give people the choice of where they buy it. Do they buy it on Steam so that they can go play it on, you know, their their OLED uh, Steam Deck as well? Or do you go ahead and you put it on Epic Game Store so you can get the deal that they have? What You, you have the options, and those options are going to bring more people to the Xbox platform. And they are essentially claiming everything as theirs. If Xbox allows this to happen, which fills the man who would pull that trigger, so he's already letting us know, if he does that, they're literally going to own the PC market. <laughs> That's insane. That's wild, bro. That's wild. And listen, I think that, you know, the ponies always went along with everything, you know, that PlayStation did and they backed it and because they knew their place right this is just the cars that we've been dealt let's go along with it i think that enough damage has been done the, the within the xbox community i think that the xbox community has held back xbox from growing for long enough it's time for them to continue to do what they know needs to be done and the crying and the whining needs to come to an end. And I'm going to tell you right now, there are no other options out there because like C-Money said, where are you going to go? What are you going to do? Go over to PlayStation. Enjoy it. Go ahead, sit over there and gallop your ass around in a freaking field. Full while of we get and hey, while and, we get PlayStation, <laughs> while we get PlayStation games day one <laughs> into our Xbox because they're coming to Steam at Epic Game Store a uh, day one. This is going to be a bloodbath, and I'm here for it. This is a bloodbath. This is crazy. This is wild. This is more of a plan than what we thought was set. And so I'm excited. I'm looking forward to the changes. And I am proud Absolutely. of Phil Spencer and everything that he's been able to accomplish and continues to do to do right by his consumers. With that, guys, we're going to leave it there. If you like what you heard, please go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Uh, we don't only put up these videos. We have four live shows a week. So make sure when you subscribe, you hit the bell. So, you know, when we go live guys, we appreciate you guys watching. Thank you all so very much. Stay on the lookout for our next video. We're going to be talking about the handheld that Xbox Ooh, is looking to make. Let's go. So keep an eye out for that. And with that, we're going to end the show the way we end every single show. Doodle. Yes. We're done. We are. Until next time. You're intruding. You're intruding.